go. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the continuation of this new Asperite series for RPG Maker MV. In this episode, we're going to be going over the actual creations of our sprites and our tools here of what we can use. Now you may have seen in previous episodes that I've uploaded of my devlog series that I do use Asperite quite a lot, sometimes just for adding some shading in uh, certain objects that I've got in the world or sometimes just to create something new. As you can see here with this tile set I have created a few uh, new assets here. Uh, one being a telephone and the other being a chalkboard for a classroom as well as just a uh, shaded Block. Now you're probably wondering how do you make tile sets that can actually tile correctly because it can become a little bit confusing. When you see all this it just looks like a bunch of garbled mess and you don't know where to place the tiles for it to actually tile correctly in RPG Maker. Now in RPG Maker MV each block or each tile is 48 by 48 pixels. So as you can see here, there is a star, which is just a guide basically, to show you that these 3x3 three three transparency blocks make up 48x48 48 48 pixels. This entire tile sheet is made up of 768x768 768 pixels width and height. Now knowing that one tile is 48x48, 48 48, that gives us... That gives us 16 total blocks for width and 16 by height. So knowing that information, it allows you to play around with certain tiles and aspects of them. So we can see here that the couches and the televisions, they're all bigger than one. If this is one tile, then we've also got two tiles up here and another one stretches all the way to the third tile. So this television is three tiles high. Although it just sounds like a bunch of numbers, it's very important to know um, how it's going to tile in RPG Maker. So, you know, I could be drawing anything. Let me just, uh, let me just draw something here. And, you know, I want this to show in uh, RPG Maker. It's not going to tile correctly. Knowing that we have a 3x3 for the transparency blocks, or 48 pixels as one tile, that's how it's going to show up. If you just place down one block in RPG Maker, that's how it's going to look. If you um, if you want the extra bit, you're also going to get part of this uh, sprite here. Or, you know, part of this. So it's very important to know exactly where our grid is going to be. We can configure grids up here. We go into the view, down to grid, and grid settings. Now, if we want each to be uh, 48 by 48 to be an exact block, then we can see exactly what we're working with. But sometimes it does help keeping these grids on. Even if you're really used to the program, it can just be very helpful. So we know exactly where each block is represented in RPG Maker. So that's for creating tile sets. You've got your sizes there. You've got 48 by 48 pixels for one block and configuring grids. Now let's say we want to draw something in this little block here, but we want it to be mirrored. We only want to draw one side because the other side is going to be exactly the same. Well, we can do that. So let's say we wanted to create a, sm a small little sprite here just to fit in this 48 by 48 section. The best way I have found personally to create assets and uh, sprites to then put into a complete tile sheet is not to draw directly onto the tile sheet itself. What I normally do is just go to file open new and we're gonna do 48 by 48 we're gonna make it transparent and just click OK so now we have the size for our little tile there and what we can do for those symmetry options under view make sure it's selected go to horizontal symmetry and you can see now we have a blue line now it means whatever we draw some good key shortcuts here B for brush L for line tool G for bucket fill, E for eraser, control C and control V as standard, and I for your eyedropper. Very, very useful tools here. Now let's just say we wanted to um, draw something here. You can see our symmetry options work perfectly. It's going to replicate exactly what you're doing on this side to the other side. 
But let's say we don't want that anymore, we just wanted that as a framework and now we want to turn it off, it's as simple as clicking the button again. And we can do the exact same for horizontal. And yes, we can even toggle both at the same time. Can end up creating some pretty, uh, pretty trippy drawings by doing this. But that's a simple horizontal and vertical symmetry. Now let's say we want to take this and bring it to our actual sprite sheet, or our tile, tile sheet. Uh, make sure we've got the symmetry options turned off. Grab your marquee select tool by pressing M and just simply drag out the entire sprite and pr press Control C and Control V. Now, because we have these guides, these grid, you can just line it up so these little white square boxes are just on the outside. And there you go. You can now place that after you've exported the tile sheet into RPG Maker MB. The way to do that is just like before, you just go to export, change your name, no need for dollar signs because it's a full sprite sheet, just name it what you want and export it. Now let's say you uh, didn't quite like this drawing but you wanted to get rid of it quickly uh, with the eraser tool, simply highlight it, press E, hold control and use your scroll wheel and that will change the sizes for any brush you have. And because we've got that selection, that's the only one it's going to edit. So let's say, for instance, we've got our pencil tool, but we want to increase the size. Hold control, use your scroll wheel, and you can simply just draw onto it. And it's only going to place inside of the selection that you have made. And control Z to undo, control Y to redo. And if you're happy with your selection, you want to get rid of the current selection, you can simply press escape. So that's pretty much the basics for tile sheet creation. Depending on your art style, sizes will differ. If you're using this pixel style that I'm using, then your brush size will be of accordance. You can change it to very small, even bigger. It really depends on what is your preference. Now you can go up here into the sprite and then sprite properties to even change the color profile or the pixel aspect ratio. If you want square pixels, that's one to one double wide, two to one, double high, one to two. So change accordingly to how your preference is. But again, for the purpose of this tutorial, it's going to be using the same style that I use. Let's go and look at something that I created, which was this foam. Now in all sprite creation, it's good to know where your highlights and shadows are. This tile set is a somewhat top down view. So you're going to get the top of objects, which are going to be highlighted from light reflection. And you're going to see some shadows, some darker areas where it's the bottom of it. And if you're wondering how we get this almost uh, transparent shadow-like color, if you use your eyedropper tool, which is I, and then take your focus down here to the left, you can see the color palette we're using, as well as our transparency, our alpha layer. So if we go all the way to the right here, and press B to go to our brush, you can see the color of this shadow, but with zero transparency. If we go ahead and take the transparency all the way up, you can see again, it's even lighter than our current transparency. I would use dead center in the middle, not too dark, not too light, but enough to see and to make a convincing shadow. Or if you don't want to mess around with that, you can always use the eyedropper tool for any other file you have open, just go ahead, use the eyedropper tool, which again is I. Select the color that you want, go back to what you're using, press B, and it will keep that selection. So that's going to be it for this quick tutorial. Uh, we've gone over sizes, some tile sheets, and how to get them working. Now again, you can see at the bottom here, we're working with 768 by 768, so a perfect square we go over to our RPG maker here, we go to our settings and we go to our tile sets. You can see sometimes the way they get displayed is not going to be a perfect square. It's going to draw it almost vertically. So you may find that some of your assets that you have look like they're cut off. And I've had this, let me just go to uh, 
this tile set here, I have some car tile sets where it looks like they're cut off, but that's completely fine because if I go to one of these and I go to draw the tile that we've got made, you can see that even though it's cut off, I can still just make that selection and add it on. It's not an issue. If it looks like it's cut off within RPG Maker, that's fine. It's still going to tile correctly if you've lined it up correctly within Asprite. So no need to worry for that. But thank you very much for watching this episode. Um, let me know in the comments down below if you have any video topics you'd like me to cover in Asprite. Anything specific that I could help with, just let me know down below and I'll be happy to help. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you later. Thank you.